Uh, so right now we move to the second talk, which was uh, which will be presented by uh, myself. Uh, so uh, a small introduction about me. Um, I'm Maryam Shehi, a consultant clinical geneticist uh, from Oman. Uh, I'm an MD graduate from Sultan Qaboos University here in Oman, uh, who specialized in uh, pediatrics uh, in the Oman Medical Speciality Board. Uh, during my residency, I have uh, noticed the burden of rare disease and genetic diseases in so many pediatric patients, and I was moved by so many, uh, you know, uh, deaths of so many patients undiagnosed um, or dying to lack of specific treatment. So I decided to pursue my training in clinical genetics, and I have done my uh, fellowship in the Republic of Ireland. Uh, I came back to join the service in 2016 here at the National Genetics uh, Center uh, that belongs to the Ministry of Health uh, under the umbrella of Royal Hospital. Um, I have been um, uh, the assistant program director also for pediatric residency for the last uh, three years. Uh, so it gives me a great uh, pleasure now to start my talk. Um, we have been uh, this morning through uh, lots of detailed talks uh, about the Arab, uh, the uh, genomic medicine in the Arab countries. And um, this is just a, a, a small presentation of, you know, uh, to summarize the last few years, uh, the work that has been done uh, through whole exome sequencing in rare diseases in the region. And so the main points I will discuss are the outcomes of these exome sequencing in a few countries that uh, has led uh, the uh, you know, rare disease discoveries in the region like uh, Qatar, like uh, uh, United Arab Emirates, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and Lebanon. And we have seen this morning a uh, few uh, already slides from uh, Dr. Khalid Fakhra, who uh, have already mentioned the Qadri uh, Mendelian, Mendelian project. Then I will take you in a few slides on our experience with whole exome sequencing. I have nothing to disclose. Uh, it's just that the last few slides uh, contain some uh, uh, unpublished work and patient uh, photos. Uh, so. Um, I will be grateful if uh, you don't take any uh, photos or screenshots. So to start with, uh, we have heard this morning how uh, Mendelian diseases and uh, rare diseases are a, a real uh, worldwide burden. They affect 8% uh, of live births, and they are the leading cause of morbidity and mortality in children worldwide. And there was a study that was published in Socioeconomics in 2015 that highlighted this serious financial burden uh, these diseases pose on healthcare systems, and the total cost of care over an individual's lifetime may exceed 5 million, and in, in some studies, up to 10 million. So, uh, in, in summary, uh, by the International Rare Diseases Research Consortium in, in 2017, there is around 300 million people, and probably more now in 2021, uh, living, uh, estimated to be living with rare diseases worldwide, and there are more than 7,000 rare diseases. 75% of which are uh, children. So to discover new Mendelian genes, the, the, these two points have been also mentioned this morning, a great coordination and recruitment on a global scale to identify and study patients with rare diseases is mandatory at this point uh, of time. And where consanguinity levels are high and family sizes are large, like our uh, region in the Middle East and the Gulf countries, the odds of identifying multiple individuals in whom, in whom the same founder mutation segregate increase, as many studies have already confirmed. So uh, we have seen uh, last uh, uh, the year before the last in 2019, the recommendations have been steering towards whole exome sequencing approach. Uh, this is a meta-analysis uh, multidisciplinary paper consensus that has recommended the use of whole exome sequencing as a first-tier clinical diagnostic test for individuals with neurodevelopmental disorders. Ten years ago, uh, the recommendations were um, uh, to use the array CGH as a first-tier, but with the uh, good uh, yield of whole exome exceeding 30% in neurodevelopmental disorders, it's prefer preferable now to start with whole exomes. 
And I would add also that the whole exome sequencing uh, is not now a, 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 a you know a sequencing uh, without copy number variants. Uh, is not the trend anymore. So many labs provide copy number variant screening along uh, with the whole exome sequencing. So the uh, uh, the need for CGH is actually now uh, probably is becoming less and less. And um, so this, uh, these uh, such recommendations has led to the move toward the use of whole exome sequencing over the last uh, probably 15 years. And we have seen so many uh, publications from uh, the region ahead of us. Uh, the first one was the Saudi Mendelium in 2015, uh, published in the Genome uh, Biology. And there were so many uh, further publications uh, from the same uh, uh, region, from the Gulf countries mainly. Uh, so to summarize, there is variability in next generation sequencing outcomes around the world. The rate uh, is 25% uh, in outbred uh, Western populations compared to uh, up to 80% in consanguineous uh, settings. And so many of these studies that I have quoted here has shown uh, a high molecular diagnostic yield of clinical exome sequencing in the Middle Eastern families. If you check uh, the online Mendelian, um, uh, 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 sorry, the OMIM website, um, Inherited uh, Diseases in Men, uh, in December 2021, when I accessed the website, the statistics are showing uh, that the number of genes with phenotype causing mutation related to a single gene disorder trait has gone up to uh, 4,178. Uh, uh, out of 4,550 genes in total. Um, but as uh, Prof. Fozan highlighted this uh, morning, there are still genes and diseases to be discovered. There are more than 3,000 Mendelian phenotypes that remain unsolved genetically. So the uh, worldwide work has been uh, moving fast uh, throughout the years. And uh, here are some examples of big papers on the work on rare diseases like the international cooperation uh, enabling the diagnosis for rare genetic disease in 2017, the genetic basis of Mendelian phenotypes, discoveries and challenges and opportunities, and deciphering the DDD study by the UK 2015. And there have been uh, uh, a few more papers uh, out of this, uh, you know, uh, uh, work that has been published in the last uh, five years. Uh, also highlighting the importance of NGS and whole exome sequencing and now whole genome sequencing uh, in rare disease discoveries. Uh, there is an interesting uh, collaborative uh, work between the Netherlands and the uh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, where this paper came out in 2019, uh, exome sequencing in routine diagnosis, diagnostics, a uh, generic test for 254 patients with primary immunodeficiencies with the good uh, yield in uh, such populations. Uh, now, um, clinical application of whole exome sequencing across clinical indications is the largest uh, study that has been published on the yield of whole exome. Uh, in 3,000 uh, almost uh, clinical whole exome diagnosed uh, uh, patients or cases, and the diagnostic yield was about 28.8%, uh, uh, and this is an, a North American study. Uh, you can uh, see the highlighted um, uh, uh, number here, the 37.7 outcome of this study uh, was uh, positive uh, for autosomal dominant uh, diseases, and the recessive were 29%, again highlighting the differences between different studied populations. If we come to the Arab uh, experience, uh, the Qatari Mendelian disease program has been already uh, highlighted this morning by uh, Dr. Khaled Fakhru, and the yield was high actually. Uh, uh, they, uh, the yield was high and they were also highlighting the importance of uh, including uh, the population uh, uh, comparison with the co control from the population and including also uh, additional unaffected sibling in the analysis. And then uh, there is another paper from Qatar uh, that looked at the whole exome uh, sequencing in more than 500 patients and the yield was about 48%. Uh, um, and uh, you see the highlighted number here, a uh, big portion of 60% uh, of those, uh, you know, um, uh, cases were autosomal recessive. Again, also they highlighted that trios have a 
better yield of 53% compared to singleton uh, whole exams. Uh, they have also uh, documented an observation that we uh, in the region have been observing a lot. I'm sure that there is an enhanced autozygosity in the populations uh, due to the consanguinity uh, here in the Gulf countries and probably in most of the Arab countries. So most of uh, some of the patients will have a dual molecular diagnosis, either of two autosomal recessive. Uh, diseases or one de novo and the other uh, is an autosomal recessive uh, disease. And then if we move to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia again, this was a huge work uh, that was published in 2017 uh, that highlighted the yield in panels and exomes of NGS in uh, 1000 uh, patients. The outcome of the whole exam was positive in 43%. Again, the recessive conditions dominating the uh, yield uh, in, in 73% uh, of uh, the patients. Uh, so this uh, homogeneous, uh, uh, res these homogeneous results are reflecting uh, how uh, the population is uh, very private and homogeneous in, uh, in the Gulf countries. Uh, this uh, small paper that was uh, published about a specific uh, group of patients where uh, patients presented to a neurology clinic, a uh, small number uh, of 26 patients had whole exome and the yield was 73%, but uh, this yield also included the variance of uncertain significance and the paper uh, did not highlight if these were uh, verified later on. Again, the consanguinity was observed 69%. Uh, now, if we go to the uh, United Arab Emirates, uh, there have been also a few publications on uh, the yield of whole exam in so many cohorts. This is a complex Emirati pediatric cohort uh, that uh, reported 41% yield, uh, which is also high, to compare, high compared to the other uh, Western uh, countries. And this is another cohort that included metabolic uh, diseases and other disorders that has shown a yield of 50% out of 85 uh, cases. And uh, finally, uh, this is another uh, paper that was uh, published uh, in 2019 by the Lebanese uh, that the added value, the added value for exome reanalysis was also highlighted in uh, this cohort where the yield was uh, increased from 49.5 to 56%. All these papers have uh, a, a wealth of data and the variants and genes about rare diseases in the country, in the region, in the Arab region. Uh, but then this uh, brings us to the negative uh, cases uh, with whole exome and the uh, you know continuous debate about whole genome versus whole exome sequencing approach. The whole genome sequencing offers additional but limited clinical utility. They uh, they. Uh, they concluded in this paper by uh, Al Faris in 2018 compared to reanalysis uh, of whole genome, whole exome uh, sequencing. So, still again insisting on reanalysis as uh, the bioinformatics and the algorithms continuously getting updated. And uh, so, uh, like a, a time gap of a year or two, like uh, need. Uh, uh, Reanalysis needed to be implemented as one of the tools before going for more expensive and laborious work like whole genome uh, sequencing. Keeping in mind uh, the um, uh, limitations of whole exome in coverage and uh, limitations of sequencing systems. So uh, in summary, uh, we have a higher yield of whole exome sequencing and clinical exome sequencing in the Arab countries compared to the Western um, uh, countries, and this in part is related to more homogeneous cohorts and the uh, consanguinity, abundant consanguinity in uh, the Arab countries. And uh, reanalysis uh, re of all exams is, uh, uh, you know, uh, highlighted in so many studies uh, in the region, the, uh, the importance for it for the sequencing. Now we come to the experience in Oman. Uh, the Sultanate of Oman is one of the Arab uh, Gulf countries. Um, and like uh, one of uh, the speakers highlighted this morning, I think uh, Prof. Habiba was uh, talking about how the, um, these uh, countries were, uh, you know, uh, cross uh, uh, roads for so many uh, years for trading and for religion and so on. So if you look at the population of the Sultanate of Oman, it's uh, 
comparatively small to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, we have uh, four and a half million. This is according to the clock uh, population clock uh, last Sunday. And uh, the, the number of Omanis is about 60%. This population is composed of uh, so many different uh, ethnicities uh, among the Omanis, and there is that uh, study that uh, was done by anthropologists that states that Omanis appear to be related to Arab, um, this is no surprise, uh, Mediterraneans, and to the West Asians, particularly the Baluch group. But this uh, study has so many limitations because it did not include so many isolated populations like uh, the uh, southern uh, government of Tafar and um, Sandam and so many interior regions where uh, they have different ancestries. And um, this was not really covered by that study. So we are not really very homogeneous uh, population in Oman, uh, but we, uh, we understand that some regions are very hom homogeneous. Uh, so to go to our experience, uh, we have started whole exome sequencing as a, a clinical service in 2014 uh, with the efforts of Dr. Nadia Hashmi, who is a senior uh, clinical uh, biochemical uh, consultant at the Royal Hospital uh, for uh, the complex uh, ca cases, uh, critical uh, care uh, cases that were needing a, di a diagnosis for a decision or prognosis. And so there were a few cases done in the first few years. And with the increased awareness of the other clinicians and the new clinicians joining uh, with the genetic and metabolic service and other uh, services introduced like the immunology uh, uh, services in adult and pediatrics, there have been increased demand. Um, in 2016 and 2017, and uh, a local audit has shown a good yield uh, and a positive outcome. So the uh, budget was raised and we had a surge of requests uh, up, reaching up to 600 requests per year in 2019. Uh, you can see that the requests have dropped in 2020 probably due to the COVID situation, I'm just assuming. Um, if we looked at the whole exome requests and the uh, hospital records, uh, this is uh, probably a biased graph because it's used by the um, hospital uh, intranet system. Uh, and this is uh, who requested the test, but it depends, you know, because we have residents rotating with us and they belong to different uh, teams. So, but the, the observation here is uh, pediatric neurology is dominating the request for whole exam sequencing. Um, and this is um, explained probably by the very um, heterogeneous and overlapping phenotypes in uh, neurology presentations. Um, and the need for a diagnosis to differentiate for treatment purposes, followed by metabolic and biochemical genetics, uh, uh, also uh, with high uh, increased number of requests. Uh, but uh, you can see that the awareness uh, has reached even to the cardiothoracic surgeons now requesting all exams for uh, some uh, rare um, you know, suspected diagnosis. Uh, so uh, in, uh, up, up to the year 2020, we have uh, sequenced 507 uh, patients. The whole exome outcome uh, in half of these uh, patients uh, have been analyzed and it has showed already pathogenic or likely pathogenic outcome in about uh, half of it, 56% of the patients received the diagnosis of pathogenic or likely pathogenic which is a very um, high uh, you know, yield compared to 22% uh, uh, with variance of uncertain significance and 22% with the negative whole exome. Uh, again, of no surprise, uh, out of those uh, positive um, patients, we had 78% autosomal recessive uh, uh, the disorders and the median age was uh, two years. Uh, just a few observations from the, the sequence uh, cases. We have uh, observed a pattern in some uh, uh, variants that were repeating uh, in the uh, same genes with same variants in so many uh, families, unrelated even. But probably if we go to the history, we can uh, make out that the, those tribes have moved from the south to the north 
or to the middle in the Batana region and so on. Uh, the very common uh, variant is in the gene LEPRE1 uh, that is causing osteogenesis imperfecta, uh, the autosoma recessive type, which is very prevalent in interior uh, region and Bahira region. And there is also a recurrent variant or a, a founder uh, uh, variant or mutation in LIFR uh, gene that is the cause of Stu Widman syndrome or schwarz jampal type two, like you see in this girl here, um, uh, where uh, the variant was even uh, in different tribes from different regions, it was uh, the same variant detected by the whole exome. Uh, another uh, gene was the ATP6V0A2, uh, which is the uh, implicated for cutis laxa or wrinkly skin syndrome, like you see in this photo on the right lower corner. And this is also an observed autosomal recessive disease uh, in, uh, in Oman. So these uh, such uh, uh, disorders are easy to spot clinically, like you see from the clinical um, uh, manifestations, and they are so uh, giving us opportunities for targeted testing first approach. And uh, we have already implemented this approach uh, by testing the same variant instead of sending for a whole exome. In the other hand, uh, we have also observed repeated variants uh, but uh, with a, a heterogeneous group of disorders. So it's, it's going to be difficult to pinpoint them clinically and ask for a targeted test for these uh, genes or uh, the presentation might be of atypical phenotype. A classical example here is uh, PRUNE1, PRUN1. Uh, this gene has been reported a few years ago uh, uh, to be also in some uh, patients from the Gulf uh, country with collaboration uh, with our neurologist here, also the Wafa Ashehi, and this um, the phenotype was uh, in uh, in some patients here was the not really a typical phenotype. Now we are observing with one variant there is uh, seizures uh, which are infantile spasms and uh, in cephalopathy. There are a few uh, new evolving phenotypes that uh, has to be reported. But the variant is the same in uh, five unrelated families from uh, uh, three different regions in Oman. And so, it, but the, if it's clinically suspected, the, the, the neurologist can just order the same uh, targeted test, which will usually take two to three weeks. Uh, otherwise, we go for whole exome sequencing. Uh, but in such cases where the uh, presentation is in cephalopathy and seizures and controlled seizures, and the parents are uh, waiting for a diagnosis, and the clinician wants a, um, a, a diagnosis to consider treatment and prognosis, probably um, going for whole exome is uh, the option. Another gene is the POMGNT1 um, uh, gene, uh, where uh, we also observe the recurrent variant in so many patients, uh, but uh, with the atypical phenotype here in Oman, and also the uh, rab 3 gap 2 uh, gene. Uh, there are a few families with the same variant, and this is uh, causing a similar phenotype, but patients presenting with cataract and microcephaly, uh, you know, it's a very... Um, heterogeneous uh, group of patients and there are so many overlapping syndromes. So we are trying to group uh, the genes that are associated with cataract and microcephaly uh, in one like a targeted panel of the variants and do them first and then probably move to whole exome of these were uh, proven negative. I think you have uh, five more minutes, so we'll move faster. And uh, some rare diagnosis from the whole exome, uh, we have got uh, this uh, baby here was born with uh, short limbs, a skeletal dysplasia uh, that was really difficult to um, pinpoint. She had also prominent eyes, uh, abnormal second finger, abnormality of uh, uh, limb bone, joint hypermobility and dislocations, and she had also breathing issues with this regulation of breathing, cleft palate, feeding difficulties, uh, patent ductus arteriosus, and thoracic hypoplasia. And she was needing ventilation for uh, almost a month in the NICU. And uh, she like never went home. She goes and comes back with uh, so many secretions and breathing difficulties. So, and the whole exome sequencing was requested to uncover the uh, skeletal dysplasia behind this uh, severe presentation. And the homozygous slightly pathogenic variant was identified in the IM uh, PAD1 gene, which is consistent with the genetic diagnosis of autosomal recessive chondrodysplasia with joint dislocation, the GPAP type, uh, which is really consistent in this patient. But 
And surprisingly, there were two heterozygous pathogenic variants identified in the poll uh, G gene, which is uh, denoting a, a mitochondrial uh, disorder in the same patient. So uh, this, uh, this patient was so unlucky to have this uh, dual uh, you know, molecular diagnosis. Another story uh, is these two siblings uh, where uh, the family was looking for a diagnosis and extensive investigation. This, I brought it, this case to just show you how much is the burden of uh, you know, um, rare diseases on patients and uh, healthcare system. So this family had the first born here uh, who was uh, IUGR and uh, born with a weight of 1.4, had some breathing uh, difficulties and chest infections. Uh, he had extensive investigations from prenatal karyotype, which was normal, to torch investigations, uh, to so many ultrasounds and liver function and metabolic workup and endocrine hormonal profiles, everything was normal. And so was sent then uh, for genetic evaluation. Um, by that time, the mom actually got pregnant when he was like two months old, and there was another sibling who looked the same, um, like uh, the first uh, born. So the whole exam sh showed uh, a, um, a variant in one um, gene uh, that is ca causing this primordial dwarfism uh, called soft syndrome, the short stature, uh, onychodysplasia, facial dysmorphism, and hypotrichosis. Um, Another uh, uh, family was diagnosed by uh, a whole exome with the same uh, variant, and these families are uh, typically not related, um, not even the same tribe. And this has been reported by uh, uh, our group in the literature, and you can have a look at this uh, interesting dwarfism syndrome. Uh, the last case I'm discussing here is of a negative whole exome sequencing of a girl who had dysmorphism uh, with abnormality of skeletal morphology. Uh, we suspected that she, ha she has some sort of immunodeficiency, but all the immune workup like immunoglobulins and uh, lymphocytes were normal. Uh, she had some, uh, you know, uh, abnormality of her skin in the form of uh, eczema and some recurrent, uh, you know, ca candidal infections. So we were suspecting some form of immunodeficiency, but she was cleared from the immune uh, team. She was really very uh, severely short. Uh, so we have requested whole exome sequencing to uncover the cause of this, um, you know, rash with the skeletal dysplasia and the whole exome was reported negative. But you know that whole exomes don't, uh, the reports uh, is not just the main course. There is always the side dish that comes with it. So the side dish has shown, that this patient harbors so many heterozygous uh, mutations um, of really serious Mendelian uh, recessive conditions. Uh, one of them is really related to her phenotype, uh, biotinidase deficiency can present with some skin, uh, you know, um, uh, problems like, a, like she had like itching, eczema and so uh, candidiasis. So uh, this is actually a fresh case. So we are, um, you know, uh, still working on the case to find out um, uh, she, she's heterozygous if there is another hit and uh, if this is really the diagnosis, uh, because usually in literature, heterozygous don't manifest in this uh, disease. Uh, she harbors other mutations in really significant Mendelian disorders like uh, Paul G in mitochondrial, uh, is a mitochondrial disease, hemoglobinopathies, which is common in the region. So this uh, family will need extensive um, counseling and pedigree analysis. The challenges we face here in, in Oman uh, are still, um, you know, we are not as lucky as the um, other Gulf countries. We still have limited funds for whole exome sequencing and whole uh, genome sequencing. And the further confirmation of the variance of uncertain significance is still a hassle for us. We are in urgent need for research collaboration for those multiply affected families with the negative whole exomes. And uh, this would really help in, you know, uh, setting up the ground for preventive uh, programs. And uh, the database is still um, uh, on the way. So moving forward in conclusion, <clears throat> sorry, as my time is uh, out, uh, whole exome sequencing with the copy number variant is a powerful uh, tool to be used as an approach for, uh, you know, uh, 
so many uh, uh, presentations in a clinical uh, or biochemical genetics uh, clinic uh, with the periodic reanalysis uh, for those negative cases. Uh, we are really, I can just, uh, you know, add my voice to the, this morning's session that we need a, an Arab rare disease registry or the Arab Genome uh, Consortium, like uh, Dr. Fakhri uh, suggested this morning. Um, uh, the founder variants might save time and money to open the door for preventive screening like we ha have highlighted in Qatar. And this can be applied to the other uh, countries since we are coming from the same roots. Uh, at the end, I would like to uh, thank uh, uh, my team at the National Genetic uh, Center. This is not a one person effort. Uh, on top of them, uh, Dr. Nadia Hashmi, who is our senior consultant biochemical geneticist, uh, leading uh, the service of uh, uh, metabolic uh, disorders uh, in the Royal Hospital, Dr. Nishad Sukheti. She is an immunologist. Dr. Nabil uh, is the neurologist. Dr. Ahuda is the biochemical uh, lab. And uh, Prof. Wad, uh, he was a he is a retired uh, director of the National Genetic Center who has supported uh, whole exome sequencing for so uh, many years. And Dr. Salma Al-Harras is the supervisor of the lab and Dr. Ali Al-Hosni who is supervising the targeted um, testing uh, for uh, all our patients. Thank you.